Hey, W Junk Guys, Junk Removal Service. I uh, kind of wanted to talk to you about a problem that I had yesterday uh, when I arrived at a customer's house. Um, it was kind of a, it was a surprise. So I had a phone call yesterday. This might help out people that are just beginning, uh, you know, junk removal. This might help. Let me let me wipe my screen a little. I don't know which camera it is. Okay, much better. And it might help people that are just starting out a junk removal service. Um, What's up, guys? How's it going, man? Who, anybody who's joining right now? Uh, just really quick video I wanted to make about an upcharge that I had to do yesterday. I, I, I don't like doing upcharge, and this is going to come up on, about pricing also, okay? This has everything to do with pricing. Um, pricing on a job, for instance, uh, when we charge for a refrigerator, it's $45. Now, should you charge for a refrigerator if it's located uh, inside a house? Or how about a mini fridge that's located upstairs or in a barn that's up some stairs or something like that? Should there be an extra upcharge? Okay, so that's really what I want to talk about. Is, is it worth it to charge a customer a, a little bit extra for going up the stairs or in an attic or in a, in a basement and having a little bit more trouble or having to take doors off a fridge? So let's just look in that topic really fast because I ran into this problem with the TV last yesterday. Uh, I did a TV for 45 bucks. It was a 30 inch. I, I carried it out. It wasn't even heavy. Uh, you know, they make some 30, uh, 30 inch TVs with a big back on it. Uh, this was a 30 inch TV that was really, really wimpy. It was, it weighed like less than 50 pounds, something like that, 40 pounds. But um, let, let's just talk about a fridge really quick. Okay, so uh, when you're picking up a fridge, I charge $45. That's my fee, 45 bucks. And that's a reasonable fee here in Dallas, and we pick up about maybe 15, 20 fridges a week. So it's a little money. It's not a lot, but it's it's some money. You know what I mean? A, a couple of hundred bucks in your pocket every every week. So uh, we do pick up a lot of fridges. So yesterday I went to a house and I picked up a fridge that was located. Get this, she had a fridge, a mini fridge that was located upstairs. So she had like a loft, and she decided to put a loft for her son. And it was upstairs. And I was like, what the hell? And how do I take it down? You know what I mean? Because it wasn't like there were stairs. It was more like a ladder. So I don't even know how they got it up there. If they used like a forklift or something, I have no idea. Um, so I got up there and I went up there and I picked it up and uh, I brought it back down. It was a mini fridge. It was not that heavy, but it just going down 10 flights of, uh, you know, not 10 flights, but 10 uh, ladder steps. It was, uh, it was challenging, you know, and I did it really quick. Uh, the thing was, should you charge for the price? Okay, so really quick, guys. Uh, when it's forty-five dollars, I look at it as it's forty-five bucks. You know what I mean? Why charge a person an extra fee? Uh, you know, a handling fee, a carrying fee. You know, hey, I breathe the same air kind of fee. There's no need for it. Okay, I think if you set a fee down for forty-five bucks for a fridge, it should be forty-five dollars, no matter if you got to take the doors off or anything like that. And I like the pricing. The one of the reasons I like the pricing is because it's easy okay it's easy for the customer think about yourself in a customer uh situation okay think about it in the customer situation uh it, it, you look online and you look on a posting on craigslist or uh you know facebook uh, um listings and you look on there and it, and it says all of a sudden 45 dollars and then when the, the junk removal company comes to your house to remove it it's 55 it doesn't make a lot of sense or 65 you upcharge them there's there's no need to upcharge. people remember when they get ripped off you know i've been ripped off before and i remember that person who ripped me off or that job or that that business that ripped me off i'll never go back so think about it that way if you upcharge somebody are they ever actually going to use you again you know is it is it really worth the extra 10 bucks you're going to make for them to to charge you you know what I mean? I mean, for you to charge them to them, for you to lose a customer entirely, you'll just lose that customer. So sometimes it's just not worth it. OK, uh, now, yesterday I did a TV uh, that was, you know, uh, 30 inches and it was upstairs. And um, OK, that's great, Jose. I'm glad you asked that, Jose. This is a great question by Jose. Yes, we do upcharge. And I tell people on the phone. Okay, uh, immediately when a customer calls in and they say, hey, I got a fridge to remove. I say, is it empty? I, that's the first thing I ask for. Is it empty? If they say it's empty, it's forty-five dollars, Jose. Okay, and if it's full, here's here's the killer. If it's full, it's seventy-five bucks right off the bat. Okay, so it doesn't matter where the fridge is located or or where or what the you know where it's at, but it's seventy-five bucks. And why? 
well, the food's nasty, you need to get a trash bag, and you just throw it in, you know what I mean? And when I started doing this about a year ago, uh, I didn't used to charge for it, but then I didn't get a lot of them, Jose. I don't know if you get a lot of people asking that, but it's work to be done. So I charge an extra, you know, not extra, Jose, it's 75 for the whole thing. So a regular fridge is 45 now, if they have a fridge with food in it, and I gotta empty out, and I gotta spend 10, 15 minutes, because really you're not gonna spend 30 minutes emptying on a fridge. It takes 10, 15 minutes, because you're just throwing it in a bag. And here's another thing for you, Jose. Be sure that if they tell you that it has food in it, be sure to use their trash bags. Say, hey, I wanna use your trash bag. Do you have a trash bag um, or, or trash can? If they let you use the trash can, just pour it in there really quick. It's not that bad. Use gloves, of course. So there it is, Jose. I hope that answers your question, but that's a great, great question early in the morning. I don't know what the hell you're doing watching my video early in the morning. I'm about to leave to work, but I wanted to get in my hot tub because uh, it's got Epsom salt and my knees are killing me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, so that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you. Now, yesterday, Jose, I went and got a, uh, and who else is there? If anybody else is there greeting, uh, you know, uh, yeah, no problem, buddy. Uh, say hi, you know, just uh, link there and say something. I don't know who's there, guys, but... Uh, uh, it seems that there's five people watching me right now, and that's great. Um, so if you got another question, I'll be glad to answer about upcharging or uh, if there's a charge for something extra. Uh, for instance, the TV that I did yesterday, um, um, I had to go bring it down, uh, and it, it was it was a beast, too. So we, we have these problems with TVs, and we have uh, it was a 30-inch TV. I didn't want to upcharge the lady. Um, I had to go get it from upstairs also, and I was just like, dang, you know. So, no problem, Omega. What's up, buddy? Um, but it, it was it was a situation where I looked at it and I said, you know what? Why mess with the customer? Why change my pricing? I've been having the same pricing forever. Why even change it? Is, is it adequate? Think about it yourself, okay? If you're a customer and they tell you, hey, it's going to take $50 to change a tire on your trailer or truck. And then when they finally get there, it's 75. Come on, man. Something ain't right there, you know? Something ain't right, pricing is wrong, and you're never gonna use that person again, and that's just period. That's what they think about when a, you're a junk removal service and you show up, and that is done to them. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing. Now, when it comes to hot tubs, it's the same thing. I don't know, this hot tub that I'm in right now is the mini hot tub. It's a $300 hot tub, okay? A big hot tub is $300, it doesn't matter if it's upstairs or downstairs it doesn't matter it's the same price okay so i want you to realize that no matter where this hot tub is located it's going to be the same price okay and that's kind of important for y'all to know that uh if it's upstairs downstairs or outside inside in ground or up ground it's the same price three hundred dollars it's a flat fee so i got a great question from the father and son team in colorado about this and they had asked me should they upcharge for uh you know for going upstairs going downstairs if the hot tub's outside or inside or anything like that and i told them no don't upcharge don't guys make it easy here's another thing about pricing uh i've learned this really really quick and this is really easy to learn okay it was really easy to learn do a flat rate on whatever you're doing do a flat rate if you're going to charge taxes put it in there so let's say you charge uh 200 300 dollars for a hot tub okay 300 dollars. that's your fee but then um here it's 8.25%, so it's gonna be 324.75. 324.75 for a hot tub here, okay? Um, I, would it, I would put the price already in there. I would say, uh, guys, your hot tub's gonna be 325, and that's a flat rate. You know what I mean? That is a flat rate. Um, that's what I would do. I wouldn't change, say, 300 plus tax. It just complicates the customer. You know what I mean? Don't do that. Just do it. So a huge pile of dirt. I charge $100 and load. Is that just right? A huge pile of dirt. You know, I uh, charge take away a hot tub in here for the UK. Uh, I, if I was in the UK, which I'm not, and I you had a hot tub, I'd charge you $300. Now, I wouldn't travel to the UK. But let's say I was based in the UK, if that's the question, I, I would charge you 300 bucks. But... No, I'm not going to go. If you're asking me if I'm going to go and take my whole crew to the UK and charge, no, I'm not going to do it. I'll probably charge you $3,000, you know what I mean? But um, here, here it is, a pile of dirt. Uh, and who asked me that question? Uh, Omega, you asked me that question. Uh, uh, no, Paul, I'm not going to the UK to do that, okay? I'm not going to remove a hot tub in Hereford. Hereford? <laughs> no, I'm not going there. So um, a great question by Omega. Omega, you said um, a huge pile of dirt. So... 
let's talk about how huge it was, okay? Uh, how many wheelbarrows, uh, Omega, do you think it was? Will you answer below? Uh, how many wheelbarrows? If I had a wheelbarrow, uh, how many wheelbarrows was it? And I'll let you know if you charge properly for $100 worth of dirt. Uh, here's one thing I don't do, Omega. Uh, I do not remove dirt, rock, cement, concrete, or anything like that. Brick, I don't do that. You know why? Because that takes up time and it takes up weight in your vehicle. The less weight in your vehicle, the longer your vehicle will last also. So imagine you having a Ford 350. Uh, 8 to 10. Golly, 8 to 10. 8 to 10. So I'm imagining 10 wheelbarrows lined up. And Isn't that a pickup load? Omega, isn't that a pickup load worth of dirt? Like almost the back end of a pickup truck? Uh, wouldn't that fill up almost a pickup load? Okay, okay. All right, you know what? I... I wouldn't I would have charged two hundred dollars for that. Yeah, I would have charged two hundred bucks. Um, dirt, there's an extra pricing on dirt, cement, rock, or concrete, and that's double the price. So let's say you're gonna go to someone's house. Yeah, I think you got got on that one, Omega. I would not charge a hundred bucks, and that's why they hired you. Okay, there's a value. I like to tell people there's a value to everything we do. Okay, there's a value to a plumber coming to your home. There is a value. He specializes in something that you cannot do. When an electrician came here to put the electricity in my, my, my warehouse, okay? He came in here and he has a specific job. Any price that he told me, I was going to have to pay, but I wanted to deal. So I asked him, how much would he charge you to put electricity here, you know? And Omega, I'm trying to relate this to you. And he said, $400. And I said, 400 bucks? Dude, uh, I called somebody on Craigslist. They said 100, uh, 300. And he goes, you know, no, no, I'll do the 300 bucks. I said, okay. So I was just trying to hustle him, get a deal, because people hustle me all the time. So, but I knew that he said, hey, sir, I got to do it for 400, that I had to pay 400 bucks. When someone picks up the phone, Omega, and I want you to hear this, and calls you to remove dirt, here's why. Okay, first thing is, they don't want to do it. Second thing is, they can't do it. They don't have a truck to do it, okay? They don't have the purpose to do it, okay? Third thing, they don't have shovels. They don't have the tools to do it. So automatically, you got them in three places, okay? And the fourth thing, they have automatically picked up the phone, okay? And this is the biggest one, and called you. That means they're desperate. At the fourth one, they're already ready to pay. They're gonna pay you. So I think, Omega, if you would have said $200, and they would have said, oh man, you know, can you do it for a little cheaper? You could have said something like 175. You know what I mean? Uh, here's a great tactic that I use, and I want everybody to use this. This is great, and I, it's a win-win situation, okay? It's a win-win situation. So I don't want to pinpoint a, a national race or anything like that, but when I go to people's house that are a lot cheaper, uh, for instance, there's people out there that don't want to pay, like, uh, I'm just going to say, I go to a, a, some customers' homes and their race and necessity, I already know that they don't want to pay a lot. And I think we know who we're talking about, okay? Uh, those people, uh, when I arrive, do not want to pay full price, no matter what. And it's a race and they're, they're not, you know, they're not Mexican, they're not black, and they're not white people, okay? So that eliminate that, that leaves a few other people out there. So I just don't want to say the race and get in trouble, you know, Indian people, you know what I mean? So I don't want to say what they are. but. If you go to their house, here's the problem. They're not going to pay what you want. So I always put, try advertising free topsoil. Omega. Hey, that's a great idea, Paul. That is a great, I've done that before and it didn't work for me. But I, I know a friend that did that also, Paul, and it worked for them. They actually advertised free dirt and someone came and picked it up. So I tried it when I first started and I said, you know what, I'm never going to do this again. So anyway, um, but... This in this city of race, Indian people will not pay, okay? So when I get to their home, I always go up higher. So if I see a job and it's $100, I'll say this, 150. Oh, sir, I'm sorry, sir. It's gonna be $150. And then they say, oh, my friend, my friend, can you do 100? And here's what I say, here's my technique, and it's a brilliant technique. I say, oh, listen, sir, listen, I can't do it for 100, but listen, let's work out a deal, okay? Why don't we meet halfway? You want to pay 100, I want you to pay 150. Let's do 125 and meet in the middle. Let's be friends about it because there's no reason for us to argue about pricing anymore. Let's just get this job done and get out of the way and let me go do a work and let you go do something else productive. And that's all, man, I use that line all the time. When someone asks for a deal, I use that line all the time. Um, 
So recently, I did the hoarder house that was in Mesquite, Texas, okay? It was in Mesquite, Texas, and I gave the price to the gentleman, okay? I gave him a price of 6800 uh, No, it was $7,000. $7,000. This is what he said to me, okay? I said, sir, it's going to be $7,000. And he looked at me and he said, oh, Ricardo, you know, you said it was going to be 6000 and stuff. And I said, you know, like, I'm sorry. I said, well, I, you know, the best I could do is, you know, 6800 bucks." And he said, he looked at me and he goes, well, I mean, I mean, the, he said the best thing I can do is sixty five hundred bucks is what he told me, and I turned around and I said to him, "Okay, boom, now we're going to get into a challenging race of, of pricing. This is going to be a challenge, so let me get prepared." So I turned around and I said, "Sir, seven thousand dollars is a good price. Nobody could give you that price, but here's what I'll do. You want me to pay sixty five hundred? You want to pay sixty five? I want you to pay seven thousand. Let's meet in the middle. Let's do sixty eight hundred bucks." And he goes, yeah, okay. And I said, and let me just get my guys out. And here, here was another thing. I want to get my guys out here as fast as I can to finish this job for you. That's the main thing. That's the thing about it. It's about timing and price to people. How fast can I remove that hot tub? How fast can I move that fridge? How fast can I remove that refrigerator, that freezer out of someone's house for that value of a price? And that's what people really care about, okay? So there's two things that people care about, you know what I mean? When is it going to get done? How long is it going to take? And what's the price? It's just really important to people. I mean, think about it. If you're getting your tire changed and you have a trailer and they say it's going to be 50 bucks, then it's going to be 50 bucks. But how long is it going to take? You want to do it really, really, really quick. Thanks, Omega. Love it, dude. Thank you for everybody sitting in on this one. So that's one of the things that I want to talk to you about, guys, uh, about pricing an upcharge. You know, if it's not necessary to upcharge, don't upcharge is what I'm trying to say, okay? Do not change your pricing because that customer will never, ever call you back, okay? But automatically, if you go to someone's house before you even do a job, tell them how much it's going to be. Observe your situation really, really quick and tell them how much it's going to be. Let them know that they've got into them. You've got in a situation and what's going to cost you, you know what I mean? It took me two hours to make $100, but yeah, I got off that dirt. I, I got off that. You know what? Uh, here, Here's a question for you, Omega. Don't think bad that you got ripped off, okay? I want you right now, Omega, really quick and tell me who makes $100 in two hours. Go ahead, Omega, right now. Tell me who makes $100 in two hours, okay? Because a dentist doesn't. A doesn't, dentist doesn't. A dentist, when he goes in to observe your, your situation and your teeth and stuff and he gets that molar out, it takes him way longer than two hours to make a hundred bucks, okay? Uh, a lawyer, okay, yeah. But a lawyer, when you say that, Omega, he went to college. A lawyer got about eight years of education. How many years did you get, Omega, to make a hundred bucks? See what I'm saying? So a lawyer does make that money, but what did he have to do to get that money? We did it. All we did was turn around and get a truck and a trailer, and then we went for two hours and charged somebody a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? If you have to realize what is the value of your pricing and what is, uh, you know, what you made and how hard you work. See, a lawyer, he'll go and say, oh, I'm going to charge you, and this is what they charge, $150 to $250 an hour, because I know about lawyers. I have a lot of them. Damn it, and I get sued. So it doesn't matter. But it, it they charge you per the hour that they make. And But look at the education. How much did it cost them to be an attorney? How much did it cost them to be a junk removal service guy? You see what I mean? Hey, conecta la trae la grande, la maria. How much did it charge them? So it makes a big old difference, guys. So I'm, I'm got to go. My worker just showed up, guys. If y'all have any questions, Omega, uh, uh, Paul, uh, thanks for sitting in on this one, guys. Thank you. I appreciate y'all coming in and, and sitting on this one. Uh, uh, thank you for listening to me and, you know, go off and stuff and just rant and stuff. Jose, I appreciate you sitting in on this one too, guys. I really, really do. Uh, thank you. If y'all got any more questions, I appreciate I'm surprised you don't have a trailer in your yard for scrap model. Oh my gosh, Paul, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> you're not going to believe this. this is a great question by Paul. Uh, Paul, I just put one of my, uh, 12 yard dumpsters yesterday. So yesterday, you know, this is weird. Yesterday, I only had two jobs on the schedule, and today, I only have two jobs. It is slow as hell. I don't know what's going on. And Saturday, I only have one so far, but Friday usually fills up for Saturday, so I'm not worried about that. But I'm like going, yesterday, I only made like 400 bucks, and I was like, what? No, you know what, Omega? I don't know if I'm going to be going live every morning, but I kind of like it. You know what I mean? I think I should go like hot tub live in the morning. What do y'all think of that, guys? I'm not sure about that. 
Uh, but listen, Paul, you're great. You're, I'm glad you said that. So, Paul, here's what I'm doing. Uh, my kids want to earn some money on the weekends, and here's what I'm doing, uh, Paul. I, I set up the 12-yard dumpster, and it's right now, and maybe I'll show it in my next video or something, Paul, but I do have one of my dumpsters. I emptied it out yesterday when I had some time, um, and then I filled it up with all recycling, okay? Now, here's, the, here's why I don't recycle. There's not money in recycling, okay? And I, I want to do a video about this by my by myself, Paul, uh, to relate. And that's what I'll probably do tomorrow. Is it worth it to recycle anymore? Worth it my time, okay? If you stay really, 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 really busy, do not recycle. Just throw the shit away. Give it away. There's no money in it. If you're really slow, like we were yesterday, we did two jobs. So I did a TV yesterday, uh, 45 bucks, and then I cleaned out a garage, 150. I, I didn't make any money yesterday. Golly, now that I think I only made 200 bucks. Damn. Oh, I went to pick up some money from someone that owed me at an apartment for 100 bucks. That's what I made the other 100. Okay, so I only had two jobs on the schedule, so I had time to set up my recycling and stuff like that. So I got it ready, Paul. But you're right. Why don't I? Well, Paul, I do. I set it up yesterday and I filled it up already. It's already full. I don't want to get out of this hot tub and have to show it to you, but believe me, bro, it is full already. I can still intake some stuff and hopefully today's job, the guy said uh, we're going to a backyard, so about a $300 job, going to a backyard in Fort Worth and we're going to clean out the whole backyard. They got He's got lawnmowers, he's got a lot of metal stuff, car parts and stuff like that. So that's going to go in the back of uh, that dumpster. And hopefully I can show you what I'm doing, Paul. I think you'll love it. O Omega, this is great. Uh, so if you're really slow, uh, you know, if you're really slow, you can't consume a lot of uh, um, electronics and metal and, and recycling material anyway. But, you know, it takes you a longer time because you don't have any jobs. But that's if you're not that busy. You know what I mean? And we, we stay really busy. So we, we, we filled it up already. It's already filled. You know, I had like four refrigerators on the property. Uh, here's another thing that we're doing. We, we love to donate instead of selling stuff. But... Uh, yeah, Hot Tub Live in the mornings. That's what I think I'm going to do. That's great, Omega. Yeah, that's really good. Montel, what's up, man? What's up, buddy? Hey, did you see my video, Montel? Really quick, Montel, did you see my video about the trucks and stuff like that? I, I did a lot of research, and I, I really looked into that video, and I started thinking about the troubles that I had in my vehicles back in the day and stuff, and I hope I related it over to uh, that it could help you out how much money you want to spend on a truck. You know what I mean? And call me later on, Montel. I want to talk to you anyway. We were going to talk uh, a few days ago, but we never got in, in touch with each other. So don't forget to call me, 214-777-3095. Uh, yes, uh, you're going to go look at some of this more. Okay, when you're there, call me, brother. Maybe I can help you out. I have a slow morning. I only have two jobs on the schedule. Uh, yes, Omega, do not. Do not do that anymore. Um, so Josh, Josh, uh, thinking about starting a junk removal business part-time. So Josh, you're probably thinking of doing something on the weekends, right? Because uh, if you're going to do a part-time, that's probably on the weekends or at night or something like that. So that's what Tony really does. Tony works at night. Anything after like 5 o'clock, after he gets off his real job, he goes and does. And anything on the weekends, he takes. And he, he busts his butt. I mean, that dude works hard. So he usually delivers, uh, you know, I do the dumpsters, the 12-yard dumpsters. But if I don't want to do the dumpster and I have a chunk removal, I just give it to Tony. And I say, Tony, go do it. And he goes knocks it out at night. He loves doing it. He can get off work. Get his uh, uh, 3500 Cummins Dodge and then go do his, uh, you know what I mean, uh, junk removal. Yes, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all day. Okay, that's great, great. So, Josh, I'll give you a really quick clue how to get jobs really quick. Um, you know what I mean? Go and look at a 2007.3, 325 for 5995. That's a lot of mileage on that 325, that, that truck. Uh, Montel, that's a lot of mileage. I don't know, man, on that one. You know, at 200, it, it's not bad. At 250, it's not bad, but a little too much. It's a little too. You should drive it and just see how it feels. And uh, you know, um, <laughs> wow, that's kind of risky. I don't know. 325 is a lot, a lot of mileage. Why are they getting rid of it now? You know what I mean? Um, if it was 225, no problem, because a lot of people say the 7.3 kicks in at about 200,000. Now I've had a Montel. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've had a 7.3. That lasted me uh, 404 miles and another 7.3 that lasted me 395. So what is your advice for getting business to start out part-time? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Josh. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, Josh, if you need business, if you need jobs really, really quick and you're just hustling and you just want to make uh, quick money and get some jobs, here's what I would do. Okay, And I did a video about how to get business in 48 hours. It's easy. And this is what I would do. 
Uh, if you have your truck and your trailer ready, uh, I always tell people have a website ready too. Always have a website ready, just a one page. Oh my God, they're so cheap to make, okay? Just get a one page website. So that's the first thing, Josh, I'm telling you. But the second thing is, be sure you're posting on Craigslist, okay? And Facebook, uh, uh, Oh my gosh, I forgot what it was. Do y'all remember what I said the few days of Facebook? Uh, not ads, uh, classifieds, the flash uh, services. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a place on the Facebook groups. It's a group thing. It's Facebook groups, and you get in there, and there's a services department. It's free. Okay, it's like a Craigslist, but it's Facebook services, and it's a group, and you join that group, and you just put your service. And I did it one time, and man, that same day, I got a, two jobs. I got jobs off of it. I don't remember how many, but I know it was more than one, and I did it really, really quick. You know what I mean? So it was free. I would post on Craigslist, uh, three posts, 15 bucks, and then I would post on Facebook. Uh, Facebook postings. It's Facebook group postings uh at don't not pay for it don't pay for it josh don't do that it's facebook uh advertising omega so you get most of your uh clients off of craigslist or uh oh let go okay well i've never tried let go i've never uh tried let go yeah josh if you don't do it I i'll tell you something if you don't if you don't want to be your own boss you're gonna re you and you don't try it you're gonna regret it i always tell people Dude, you bust your ass 20 years working for, you know, a company like, like you know, Boeing or, or you know, AT&T, and you bust your ass working for Spectrum all your life, and you're doing this, and you're working for the electric company 20 years, and after your 20 years is done, and you blood and you sweat for those companies for that long, and after your, your 20 years is up, what do they give you? You know, here, you bust your ass and you sweat for yourself. You kill yourself for yourself. You kill yourself for your family. And that's what I do. I bust my ass every day for my family and my kids. You know what I mean? I work hard for my family and kids. You know? That's what I would do. So work for yourself. Do it, Josh, and you won't regret it. Even if you fail, keep on trying and work harder. I always tell people, press harder. You know what I mean? Uh, so Montel, really quick, Montel was telling me that if I'm looking for an older model truck, it should be better. Yes! Yes, that is true. Uh, yes. H here's the problem about it, Montel. Uh, gas is... Uh, uh, older trucks guzzle through gas. I mean, you always got to have an extra 30 bucks on you. Uh, that's the bad thing. On a diesel, every three days, every two and a half days, you got to put a diesel. So that's the good thing about it. Gas trucks are faster. Diesel trucks are really slow. Diesel trucks, you got to... But diesel trucks will last. They will last. They're good trucks. But gas trucks are great gas trucks. I mean, hell, you see my 1995 truck. It's a beast. The 7.5 is a beast, Montel. So I hope that helps you out. You know, there's there's pros and cons about having a... Uh, a uh, gas truck and then there's pros and cons about having a diesel you know what I mean you can do jobs faster in a gas uh, you can save money with a diesel truck you know what I mean uh, which one pulls harder a diesel truck pulls harder does a gas truck pull hard yeah but a diesel does it a little better you know it does it better you know what I mean uh, there's there's always that line uh, which one will last you longer I think a in an older truck, a gas truck will. In a newer truck, the diesels will easily outlast them and stuff. So if you're going to do one, you know, uh, just try to understand that, guys. So anyway, guys, I'm going to end this vlog. God, I talked for 20 minutes. He's waiting for me right now. He's looking at me like, when am I going to end this? So you should see Diego. He's over here. Did y'all see Diego playing the guitar? That was awesome. You know what I mean? Uh, in the other videos, uh, you know. Hey, Omega, love and respect to y'all. Montel, muchas gracias, guys. You know, uh, Gomez, thank you so much. Savage. Oh, really? You long-winded mother... <laughs> Savage. Dude, I want to go get those tacos at Six Flags, Savage. I'm not lying, dude. I want to go try it. I want to try I sat in your last live thing. You talk for a long time, dude. Don't BS me, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, take it easy, guys. I will talk to you all later. I'm going to do a video later tonight. I just want to get one out of it. I think this is what we're going to do. Uh, yeah, yeah. I do want to go, Savage. My kids saw your video. Uh, one of my kids is hooked on to you, by the way. So here's what's crazy, Savage, is that... My kids won't subscribe to my channel, but they'll subscribe to your channel, you dick. You're a dick, bro. I don't like that. You know what I mean? They say, oh, I like Savage. Let's go to Six Flags with Savage. Do you know him? I'm like, yeah, of course I know this punk. So now I got to go with you, Savage, with my kids, and they're going to love you. They lo you're, they're a fan of you. Isn't that crazy? Fucked up. 
No, I don't love it. I know you love it. Hey, Montel, you can call me in about 20 minutes, bro. I'm about to get in my truck, start driving to Fort Worth. You can call me in about 20 minutes. I'm going to just change really quick. I just throw in some shorts and I'm out. And we're going to talk about what to work in the next few days. You know what I mean? You know? We're going to talk about that. Hey, Omega, yeah, come on come on by tonight, brother. We'll, we'll shoot a video live tonight, me and you, brother. Okay? Uh, if you want to do that, Omega, we can shoot a video and we'll talk today. Okay, guys? I will talk to you all later, guys. Do not forget, uh, 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 Omega, just pick up the phone and call me. Uh, and we could talk about what time you can come by. Okay, buddy? And um, Montel, uh, give me a call in about 20 minutes, brother. I'll talk to you. Okay, buddy? All right, guys. I will see you all later. I hope this helps you all out with pricing. Just starting off, if you're just starting off, this is a great video. Okay, and if you're if you're in this business and you know pricing, what what the hell are you listening to me? You know what I mean? Omega, it's 214-777-3095. And plus, it's always on the link below. What's wrong with you, dude? I'll talk to y'all later, guys. Bye-bye. See ya.